Hey guys, welcome back to the shop for another week of Saturday Night Special. So today, in this episode, we're going to go ahead and finish out our work that we've been doing on the Reed 108 Vice. I uh, get to the body work and the paint and then the, uh, the intricate painting that I do on the, on the logo. And uh, by the end of the episode, we'll have a completed project there and you, got, you guys will get to see um, how, how that turned out. That was a good project. It was an excellent, beautiful vice to restore and uh, or recondition should I say but uh, I really enjoyed that project and I've got more of those in store maybe not full-on build videos but I've got more vices like that that I plan on restoring in the near future and uh, getting them back in uh, good clean working condition uh, so hopefully you guys enjoy that and uh, get to see the vice done I also wanted to give you guys a little update on some other work that's been going on around here I do have a um, quite a bit of job shop stuff that I've been keeping busy with too. I've got a few small projects that I've been doing for around the shop and just kind of compiling a bunch of uh, content there to share on the channel. So we got some job shop stuff right here that I've been working on. Uh, I've already repaired an exhaust manifold. I've got a, some broken bolt content, you know, uh, broken bolt extraction content to share. And I've got some spray welding content coming up in the near future as well. We've got two separate jobs in here that we'll get to set up our spray well equipment and do some uh, do some repair on some shafts. So looking forward to getting to that pretty soon. So I got, I got the content It's going to keep coming at you. This past week I just released the, uh, the how-to on uh, how to read a micrometer. As I said in that video, I want to keep trying to make some small, uh, short how-to videos to try to help the younger guys or the people that's just out there uh, learning the trade. I, I got a lot of people that's asking me to uh, keep making those videos. They're very uh, basic elementary type training videos and uh, I, I enjoy sharing you know that kind of stuff so I'm gonna keep working on those you know in between the other content as well. Alright I wanted to give a thanks to my friend Eric up at Hand Tool Rescue. He sent me one of his mini pocket wrenches right here and I believe you can go over to, uh, to his site or his website and order you one of these if you'd like one. But Eric, uh, thank, you, Mer thank you very much for the, uh, the pocket rinse. This is pretty cool. And uh, believe it or not, I've actually already put this to use twice on some little projects around here. So it is a neat little wrench. And uh, thank you very much for uh, sending this to me. I really appreciate it. I did want to mention that I've got one of the Bison Super Spacers up for sale. If anybody out there is uh, perhaps looking for a Super Spacer, uh, I got my email there in the video. You guys can uh, send me an email and uh, you know we can talk about it. But I've got one of the Bison Super Spacers and I also have three Kurt Vices. It's the, D, the D60 Vices, so it's the older model, not the 688. So I've got three of those Vices that I would like to sell and then the, uh, the, the Bison Super Spacers. I've actually got two of the Bison Super Spacers. One of them is in great shape, and then one of them is uh, locked up, and I haven't spent any time on that thing yet to uh, you know get it apart and see if anything's wrong with it. But uh, I do have that stuff for sale if anybody happens to be looking for one of those. All right, so one more quick mention before we get to our vice work. I recently took a road trip up to Savannah and got to hang out with uh, Keith Rucker, Mike Wiggins and uh, Lance Baltzy and we went and toured the Roundhouse Museum or it's the Georgia State Railroad Museum there and we got in touch with one of the men that that works at the museum and uh, he he was able to take us and and let us get into the shop areas with you know, the blacksmithing shop the machine shop and repair areas and they also have a warehouse there where they have a lot of machinery that's just being stored a lot of machinery that's been donated to the museum over the period of I don't know how many years and it was really cool to be able to get back there and uh, get to see all this old machinery and uh, I, I took video of it so I've got videos coming of that and while we were in Savannah we were able to go to another machine shop it was a separate machine shop there in Savannah and uh, it's, it's a shop that's been in business I believe for about 113 years now and we got to uh, go in and meet the owner and talk to him and he allowed me to take some video of his shop while I was there so I got some video of that and it's an interesting place got a lot of history to it a lot of very old machines and it's kind of like walking back in time and just imagining all the work that went into that place so I got some of that content that's going to be coming to the channel real soon too so these are the small components of the vice there we got the split nut 
I've already got wire dryer brushes. Washer goes on there. You got the pin goes behind the main nut, and then of course the set screws. So I'm gonna I'm gonna Osfo blue the um, these pieces right here. I'm just using this stuff right here, brown else Osfo blue. And by the way, you can pick this stuff up on Amazon. It's an easy place to get. I think it's around sixteen or seventeen dollars on there. So it's kind of pricey, but it works really good for this uh, tool restorations. I just use a little cotton ball right here, soak it up. Just rub it on good and it just kind of momentarily turns it a black, a black shade. I think this is this stuff's really good for parts like this that you want to color it a little bit you don't want to paint them and this will do a good job of giving them a, a nice uniform color with a slight amount of corrosion inhibitor to it you know a little bit of resistance to the moisture it'll keep it oiled up too Go ahead and hit this one since we got it wet there. All right, so once you got them wetted down, just take a clean rag and just go ahead and dry them and uh, wipe them off good. I'll probably use the air gun on these to kind of blow dry them a little bit, but just wipe off the excess. There they are, blued and then dried. So I'm going to give them a coat down with my Sterid M1 oil. You need to oil them after that. It really makes them look good too. I'll just let them sit here for a day and just kind of dry out um, but it'll it'll leave a nice protective oily film on the on the surface there and then this part right here once in the vise it actually stays uh, there's a there's an oiling hole in the side of the vise so that this thing stays kind of lubricated up inside here with this vise handle turns stuff is like a milky white substance it's got a couple different acids in it that uh, converts rust to uh, black rust. It creates it so that it gives it like a, a primer surface that you can paint on top of. This nut right here, I'm going to do the same thing, mainly just to kind of protect it. There's really not a lot of rust left on it because I cleaned it off, but it'll turn it black so it'll look nice. That's, that's the other thing I like about it is that it, it just turns black. So it kind of looks like it's painted black. And it'll protect it from rust for a long time. I'm going to go ahead and mix up the Loctite metal filler. So again, we're using the 3471 steel putty. So it should be a, a ratio of two and a half to one, the filler and the hardener. And the way they do this stuff is that you buy it in like, a, this is the one pound kit and they have other kits with the different sizing as need. I'm just going to mix up a little at a time. This is the hardener right there. 
if you wanted to use all this at one time, they said just mix all all this together. But we're not gonna we're not gonna do that. So I'm not gonna make it perfect. I'm just gonna kind of gauge about how much I want. Wow, that stuff is pretty pretty hard there. I guess we'll have to use the paddle that came with it. So this has a 30 minute working time and then a six hour cure time. Alright, I think that's mixed pretty good. It also came with this little paddle there in the kit. So, you know, you got different shapes and contours you can use. So, let's go try it out. Let's get it on the vise. Definitely not a body man, so I don't have a whole lot of experience with this kind of stuff, you know, to get the the proper feel for everything. So just kind of doing it as we as we go here. Just trying to thin it out. All I want to do is just fill some of those little low spots. I'm not trying to build the whole surface up. I'm gonna come back over this and and um, kind of sand this area down. Alright, there's a bunch of it right down here that we need to do. So the Loctite's cured for 24 hours now. It should be good and hard. I'm going to go ahead and start dressing it in. I'm just going to use the abrasive disc right there, some of these Osborne wheels. We're going to try that, see if I can smooth it out.
there's my attempt at some body work there. I just tried to grind down all the excess uh, filler there and just try to leave it in the little low spots. So it's, it's going to look a lot better than it did. All those little tiny holes and gouges that were all in from the arcing are filled in now. I went over it with this sanding block right there just to kind of help even it out and smooth it out a little bit. It seems to work pretty good. Yeah, I like it.
So anybody that knows me well knows I'm not really into painting. It's not my favorite thing to do, but you know, this is something that I definitely wanted to try to do to make it look nicer. And this little technique where I was just doing <clears throat> this right here, dobbing it, that's something that I picked up from Jack English Machines on Instagram. I saw him do that on some of his, uh, one of his restoration posts. And I thought it worked pretty good. I thought I would try it. And it actually does work pretty good. I just took a, uh, one of these shop towels and folded it up, taped it up, just like he showed. And just dab it in a little bit of paint. And uh, just very, very lightly tap it on there. So I need to do another coat. I'm just letting that dry. But I've been wanting, I've been trying to determine how I want to do this logo. So I think I'm going to go with my original idea, which is down inside there where it's recessed. I'd like to go with a gloss black. I got this gloss black right there, and I bought this little pack of paint brushes, little cheap paint brushes. But I think I'm going to go ahead and give it a shot. Paint this black down inside there, and then I want to do the raised letters in white, just like the uh, these other raised letters there. So that's what I'm going to attempt. If it ends up not looking good, then I'm just going to wipe it off or just repaint over it, you know. But I'm going to give it a shot. By a single internet. Oh, by the way, so I've been doing some research now that I'm going to put it on hold. But I looked up, uh, I got a quote for a great Toyota Forklift, which is really good. It's a machine, it's huge, so it's about 20 grand. Uh, but I met some guys at Workbench Top Man that overheard us talking about this. And he yeah. said, what you need for your terrain with a fire. Listen, the new Kubotas are really awesome. They, and Kubota, if you finance it through them, they, they offer a free replacement. If it gets stolen, if you ground it in the lake, whatever, they just bring you a new machine. No kidding. I'm going to give this foam brush a try for the raised letters. I probably should have just went ahead and painted it white to start with. And when I started this, I wasn't sure which would be the correct technique to start to, to do first. But I was going to try this to see if possibly we can just rub the raised section. But I don't know how it's going to do. It's not smearing pretty evenly there. Looks like paintbrush might be have to might be the way I have to do it. It's not <laughs> it's not looking good. I might have to wet it down. I just dipped it once. It's just not putting it down very evenly. That's the only thing I'm not liking about it. It's kind of easy to get to the edge, but just doesn't look even. I'm going to go back to my fine paintbrush and see if it makes a difference on how I can square in these lines. The uh, foam brush doesn't seem to be doing what I want it to do. I feel like I can get a better line with this here actually. Yeah, I think the paintbrush is going to work better. Just, just my experience here so far with what little I've done. But if I had to do it over again, I think I would go ahead and just paint this whole thing white and then highlight the blacks underneath there. But live and learn, right? The only way that you're going to do it is to um, get some experience and then learn from your mistakes. So I'm not a painter. There's our first coat done for the first side. Not too bad. I ended up using the brush to finish it out. So we're getting ready to move to uh, this side now and uh, finish that reed out. And I'll come back later once they dry, put a second coat on them, fill it in. It's time to finally get this thing back together. I've got my second coat of white on the reed and it's dry, so I'm ready to. Ready to get it slid together. We got her bolted down to the 
welding table here here's the other side looks good let's get it together there's our nut cleaned up I'm gonna go ahead and just put a little bit of oil in here we're not gonna be greasing any of this we're gonna use machine oil this is the same oil that I use on the shaper I bet you the factory, I'd like to see the setup, I'm just guessing, but I bet you they use something like a shaper or some kind of slotting machine, maybe a vertical slate, a shaper to mill that or machine that dovetail up inside there. That's the pin that just keeps the, the nut in place. It's always being pulled that way against the shoulder, so this pin just keeps it from trying to back out. Putting a little bit of oil on the bearing surfaces here. This is where the dynamic jaw slides through. There's our split nut. That's what goes inside there. So these are little notches so that you can kind of get in there with a punch or something to twist it out, screw it in or screw it out. And then all these little notches here is so that you'll have a place for the set screw that goes into the side there to uh, lock it and then just keep it from spinning. So it just goes around like this. And hopefully we can get it in here. Get it to screw in. I think that's going to be pretty good right there where it's at. And there's our original set screw. Just looking to make sure that I've got a notch lined up in the center of the set screw there, and I do. going to be our oil hole or we can shoot a little oil in there to lubricate the screw started right the first time All right. 
There's our handle. I've decided that it's going to stay just like this <coughs> so that it is removable at any time that I would ever want to remove it. I don't see a reason to have to completely keep that thing locked on there or use any kind of Loctite. If you really wanted it tight, we can just clamp this into another vise somewhere and just really torque down on that thing and it'll be fine. But that thing is moving nicely. Lock down my table a little bit. That's just the, the table itself moving a little. <laughs> a lot of weight swinging around there. Beautiful. There it is. It is moving a lot more freely than it was whenever I had first got it. There was just a lot of rust and dust build up on it, paint and that kind of stuff. Feels good. Even this you know, the screw right there where it's pulling into the shoulder it feels nice and smooth, even though it wasn't completely true with the, with the screw itself. It just has a nice, smooth feel to it. I love it. For this bare metal portion of the uh, moving jaw, this and the, this outside area, the handle and the screw, I've actually already sprayed those down with the uh, CRC SP350 and let it dry and I kind of wiped it a little bit. So it does have a little bit of film protection there or rust inhibitor already onto the surface. But I'm going to continue to keep it clean, uh, you know, from here on out, just from any kind of moisture getting on it, just like I do with the, the rotary welding table there. But it should uh, work pretty good. But, I mean, this thing is uh, it's ready to go. It is ready to use. that's going to conclude the reconditioning of this uh, beautiful 8 inch reed vise. I had a lot of fun doing it and I'm so excited to finally see this thing cleaned up properly and got some fresh paint on it. We got it cleaned up, got all the rust off of it and it is ready to use and I'm very excited about it. I'm just thrilled with how, how it turned out. I love the colors that we put on there with the gray and the black and the white. It just really, really looks nice there so happy with how it turned out so i just love these old tools you know I, I love these tools more and more every day you know these uh these old vices and all, all of the old tools that I always show you around the shop right here but uh, i'm really looking forward to being able to have this around here and use it in the in videos and for uh, future projects and i was so happy that i was able to acquire this from my friend andrew over there at blacksmith tools you know, even him, uh, you know, just offering to sell this particular one to me. Very happy to have it. So, just uh, love the way it turned out. Hopefully, you've enjoyed watching me uh, recondition this thing and uh, get it back to life. So, that is going to conclude the uh, chapter on this one right here on cleaning this guy up. But I will say that I do have some more uh, videos and another project in store for this particular vice. And what I would like to do is build a very heavy duty pedestal for this thing to mount on. You know, it's not going to stay on this here and it's not going to stay on that table there. Uh, what I would like is have it to where I can use it out here on the floor or outside or wherever I want to. So uh, when I was visiting Andrew, I looked at uh, one of his pedestals that he's got. He's got an original casted pedestal that uh, one of his big 8 inch vices are mounted to. And I want to not replicate that, but I want to kind of copy the idea behind that pedestal, uh, make it very heavy duty, uh, just very heavy so that, you know, it doesn't move around. So it's going to be kind of similar to uh, this rotary welding table. I'm going to have a big piece of plate cut for the bottom, probably like two inch thick plate steel. 
I'll have uh, four mounting leveling feet on that and I'll have it so that I can put my pallet jack under it, pick it up, move it wherever I want to and set it down and get it out of the way. And then the uh, upper portion will have a little bit smaller plate but still very thick and heavy that this vise will be mounted on. And uh, just lo really looking forward to doing that, uh, getting that project. I can't get to it very soon, but I've got, I've got some other jobs I need to get to. And uh, that one's on the list. I want to get started on it. And uh, hopefully in the next couple of months or so, maybe I can get started on that project there as well. I got to figure out the dimensions of the plates that I want and get those ordered. I've already got a big tube for the column in the center. I've got a big heavy duty gearbox shaft that's going to go down in the middle of that to add a bunch of weight to it because I want that thing big, heavy, and solid so that thing doesn't move around when we're using it. So that was going to be coming up in the near future. And uh, I hope you guys had fun and enjoyed following along the reconditioning of this, this uh, eight inch reed vise. And um, I'm looking forward to doing some more. I really like bringing these old tools back to life. All right, so we will see you guys again on the next video, all right?